Hello, this is Silas from Rantaton, and this is today's Totally Unresearched Dalliance. In this one, I'm going to talk about, I think I'm going to title it, Conservative Selection, something like that. Well, I've been making observations of late, recently, a few years, about how different things happen for the same reasons, or the same things happen for different reasons. I was discussing this a few days ago with... It was a few weeks ago, I had this movie night with some friends, and all three of the friends had glasses, they had issues with their eyes, and I was just joking with them. They were talking, exchanging glasses, and testing each other's glasses, talking about the eyesight struggles they had, and I just joked around and said, how is that? Then they looked at me and said, what? And I said, having weakness, like sharing some, sharing some, uh, companionship through this weakness. Now, it was tongue-in-cheek. They laughed back, too, and I've had my own physical issues dealing with weight and some other issues, but when it comes to something like eyesight, it's quite easy for people to see that we're not all equal. We're not all made the same. Now, think of this situation of eyesight. If somebody has bad eyesight or less than 20-20, let's say less than the average or expected, you don't say they have equal eyesight to somebody else. It's agreed that this person has a different level of eyesight. They get glasses, they get LASIK surgery, they get something else. They get something to, to make up for that difference. If anybody just came out and said, yes, they're equal, just have them drive a car without glasses, both people, you would say no. You would understand there'd be a difference. Another field that you see the actual differences is with height. If somebody is tall, somebody's about six foot ten and relatively athletic, you'd kind of consider them to be somewhat proficient at basketball if they played. If they played and tried really hard, you can be like, yes, you get to make the school team. But if somebody was 5'4 and also athletic and they tried a lot, you wouldn't be that surprised if they did not make the team. So there's certain things where it's physical and you can see and you can understand that the difference is in in the qualities, and we're not all equal when it comes to these things. Yet this trope continues to be pushed that, yeah, we're all equal, or men and women are equal, or people of different races are equal, or people who lived in different places are equal. I personally know that I've traveled around to a lot of places growing up, and even my relatives, my brother and sister who traveled around with me, had entirely different experiences. There's this wonderful quote by Thomas Sowell that says, even the same man isn't the equal to who he was yesterday. Now that's paraphrasing. Um, might include the actual quote. Let me get back to the core of this totally unresearched alliance. I was thinking, I was talking with my friends who, <laughs> my differently sighted friends, I was talking to them about um, people with glasses, people who need Lasix, people who need aid to work on their eyes. I just thought, does it seem like there are more people that way today in the world? And they probably are. There's probably a larger percentage of people alive today that have bad eyesight. Now, why is this? With advances in human society and civilization, the physical constraints of the past no longer apply to us in the same ways that they did. So to pass on your genes to mate and reproduce, having the genes for naturally... Okay, you see... I was saying naturally here, but it's not naturally. Humans are natural, and LASIK technology is a result of a natural being. So having genetics for good eyesight is not as important as it once was in the past. And an anecdotal example is a friend of mine who's currently going to get laser corrective eye surgery, which you should really look into. It's really cool how they get this thing done. So I'm super excited for him. He's really happy about it. But I asked him how his eyesight began to deteriorate. He said that it was sometime during grade school. He was sitting in class, in the back of the class, and he looked and noticed that the writing on the whiteboard was blurry. And even when he moved to the front of the class, it still was. And he also shared how the teacher didn't believe him. But the next day, he went to an optometrist and got his eyes checked and soon thereafter got glasses and has had them ever since. But in the past, imagine if you're in a prehistor prehistorical environment. You're out in the woods hunting for some time, a few years, you've been out there hunting, and you're pretty good at sighting animals and 
throwing your spear and hitting your targets and getting food. So your sexual marketplace value is going high. Then one day or over a couple of weeks, course of weeks, your eyes, eyesight starts deteriorating. You start becoming less good of a scout. You're not that good at hitting your targets anymore. You start being able to get far less resources. Your sexual marketplace value reduces. Once it reduces, you have less chances to find a mate willing to mate with you and pass on your genetic code. So if there's any genetic aspect to the eyesight, that gets knocked down and then you have less of a chance to actually mate and pass on your genes. So now in the current year or the current era, um, you have a situation where bad eyesight does not necessarily affect your sexual marketplace value that much. In fact, it might be a situation where if you're not that physically adept at something, you might be pulled towards doing other things. If you can't see far, if you can't shoot a basket, if you can't catch a football because you can't see it or things like this, these more physically physical requirements of good eyesight, you might be drawn to doing other things, sitting in front of a computer or writing or reading. So you just get some reading glasses. You might want to be in the house reading, and that could actually end up raising your sexual marketplace value in the current um, workplace environment that we have, thus high raising the chance for you to pass on your genetics. And I think this aspect does flow over into other, other sectors of life. It's not necessarily just in eyesight, but I think there's certain behavioral patterns that you do see that are passed on currently in the current era that would not exist in the past. You know, certain behavioral patterns, certain political leanings, certain personality traits, even certain sexual orientations, which is another good example, I think. It's not controversial to say that there's a lot of evidence for some genetic links to homosexuality. So it does not necessarily mean if you have these genes, you're going to be homosexual, but there are certain figures that say, okay, if you have this, these certain genes, there's a higher chance that you may be homosexual. So it's a bit of nature and nurture. It's kind of like if you have certain genes, you could be 6'5", but depending on what you do with your life, you could possibly be shorter or I think a little taller. Anyway, so I'll get back to this. In the past, if you were homosexual, likely was you weren't passing on those genes. So any genes that are attached to homosexuality would have a lower chance of being passed on. Now you have in vitro fertilization, you have surrogacy. There's other ways for homosexual couples or homosexual people to actually reproduce with their actual genetic code without getting into a traditional monogamous or polygamous relationship. So yeah, that's the nature versus nurture thing. I think as humans, more, th more so than any other living being that we know of, we are more than just our genes. Our genes kind of, our genes are like the textbook or the sketchbook itself, the actual physical paper, binding, etc. And you can have different, I think, base qualities of that. You can buy a sketchbook for about $4 or something with newsprint, or it could be a pretty good sketchbook, pretty high quality sketchbook, heavy weight paper, but it's really small, maybe three by five, and it's $10. $10. Or you can buy, you can have a sketchbook that's really massive, you know, one of those big flipping ones, like maybe 24 by 32 inches, but it's newsprint paper also. So the textbook itself, the sketchbook itself that you have has certain limitations and abilities that are already in there. But now the thoughts, the ideas, the nurture aspect of it, I think is now what's drawn into that sketchbook, what you put into that sketchbook. And now depending on that sketchbook that you have, if you get like a Sharpie, this is just the permanent marker, and you draw with it into a newsprint paper, depend, no matter the size, it could have negative effect on the actual book itself. You know, it's going to be far more indelible on certain kind of paper than it will be on others. If you have heavyweight paper, then you can use ink, you can use watercolors, you can possibly even use acrylic paints or oils, depending on the quality. 
But now let's say you have the ability to use oil paints, but you have a really small sketchbook with a really few pages, then you may be able to get a lot of intricacy or definition or colors or different effects, but still on a limited range of things. So I'm going to develop this analogy later. I think it's a pretty good analogy that I'll probably use again. Just came up with it now. That was today's Totally Unresearched Alliance. The reason I thought of conservative selection was this article that I saw in the morning today. It was Scientist Wins Miss USA Slammed for Conservative Comments. So these were the comments she apparently said. It's a 25-year-old scientist from District of Columbia who works for the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission was crowned Miss USA on Sunday. So Kara McCullough, apparently when she was asked uh, some of her questions in the, in the pageant, and this might be just too, I might be being too hard on her or not understand the context or just using this kind of a situation where it's like, look, this is a limited time to answer these questions. There's a certain technique to answer these questions, so they have to answer them in that way. But she says this when he was asked about healthcare. He said, I'm definitely going to say it's a privilege, McCullough said, when asked if access to medical care was a right as liberals such as Senator Bernie Sanders say, or a privilege, as many conservatives say. She then added, as a government employee, I'm granted health care, and I see firsthand that for one to have health care, you need to have jobs. See, that's good. You need to have jobs. So when I first read this, I thought you need to have a job, and I thought it was, okay, maybe it's implying that the employer should give jobs to the employee. I mean, give health care to the employee which I thought, okay, that's not really a conservative position, is it? Or this is what I was saying, the conservative selection. Has it changed the term conservative due to how far left the atmosphere has become? So later in the competition, McCullough and two challengers were asked to explain what they consider feminism to be and whether they consider themselves feminists. Miss District of Columbia replied that she likes to transpose the word feminism to equalism. I don't want to call myself a feminist, McCullough said. Women, we are just as equal as men, especially in the workplace. Now, I don't think that's a conservative talking point. It might be. But egalitarianism, as I said in this, in this post, in this video earlier, we're not equal. Even the same person isn't equal to that same person an hour ago. I'm not equal to who I was before I started making this video because now I have made this video. So that equality thing, let's continue with this. So McCullough, who graduated with a chemistry degree from South Carolina State University, said after the contest, I believe we've come a long way and there's more work to be done. I think domestically we are making progress, but I do believe that we will become equal one day. So equality. Again, this goes undefined. Without the definition, you can't even, you can't even point out if it's achievable let alone if it's something that people want to do, even if they can achieve it. When it comes to this answer, this, we have come a long way, and I do believe there's a long way to go. This is a general non-answer given by politicians, and I have heard this very answer given by feminists when they discuss feminism, when they say, okay, I'm a feminist because even though we've come far, we have a long way to go. But they never say where we've come from or where they're going. So... Quoting this as a conservative point, to me, is not, doesn't really fit the bill. Well, of course, I mean, this was about her being slammed, so here are some of the detractors. Miss USA, Miss DC, just lost me with that answer. Affordable health care is a privilege? Girl, bye. This was by Dazella May on Twitter. Okay, again, the girl thing. Why call her girl? She's a lady. She's 25. She's up there on the stage as a woman. Give her respect. But anyway, it's a small thing. But, okay, she mentioned healthcare. And then this person, Dizella May, goes to affordable healthcare. What does affordable healthcare mean? That's another thing. That's another thing like the equality. doesn't go defined. Tying it back into the story I was talking about before with uh, LASIK eye surgery. What's affordable? I had two stories. Current friend who's going to get surgery now. The other is a partner of a friend of mine who got his surgery done through Groupon. Groupon, for those of you who don't know, is, is a site where a group of people go in and they get discounts on certain things, certain product, products or services. 
after a certain number of people have signed up. Let's say it's, okay, we're going to go to an amusement park. An amusement park comes on and says, if we get 50 people signing up for Memorial Day weekend, then it'll be 25% off admission for these 50 tickets. And that discount only comes in if there's 50 people. But yeah, that's how it works. So my current friend, he's going up to see a specialist to get his surgery done. Now, both of them considered their surgeries affordable. Actually, both of them considered a discount. The cost for the Groupon one was about $700. He said it was more of an assembly line thing where you go in with a bunch of people and there's one doctor that preps you, another doctor that... Okay, so first someone takes down your info, one doctor preps you, then one doctor like cleans your eyes or something, one lasers you up, one closes you up. However this thing works, but he said it was more assembly line. He got through that. The current guy is going to a specialist, seeing two different doctors. I asked him what the cost was. He said, wow, it's a lot cheaper than I thought it was. And I said, okay, how much is it? He said a couple of thousand. So now to him, that was a lot cheaper. That was affordable. Both these people had affordable health care in their opinion. One of them is paying, I think about, uh, what was it? About 400% 400 or 500% more than the other one. Yet they both consider that health care affordable. And at the end of the day, they'll both have their eyes fixed. So I think in this sense, when Miss America or Miss USA here said the the jobs thing, that's how it works. Now there's jobs being produced by those people having, I mean, by those people getting that LASIK surgery. And also having those jobs, having those doctors able to have those jobs, whether it's a specialist that my current friend is seeing, or having Groupon, having these kind of job environments, creating a situation where you can have an assembly line of doctors to fix people's eyes. That's another form of getting healthcare. I'm going to wind this down now. There were some people supporting Miss USA, like this one person who said, black people hating on Miss USA because of conservative positions need to stop acting like owned brainwashed slaves to the left. This is by Damel Wesh. And uh, this is pretty good, seeing there's a defense out there, there's a pushback out there. And what Miss Universe said here, I mean, she's got to run for Miss Universe next. What Miss USA said, in my opinion, not necessarily conservative positions, could be due to the atmosphere, political atmosphere moving so much to the left that these actually count for conservative points, but positions. But I'm glad to see somebody at least cracking the mold, you know, if not completely, completely breaking out of it. But seeing those different things happen for the same reason. It's kind of interesting to see that just rewarding these things and not putting a label on it, they could still be technically the liberal left positions. But people in the liberal left are freaking out about this. Some of them are like, oh, this, this is crazy. I can't believe she's saying this. And people on the right, more conservative end, are like, wow, this is amazing that she's saying this. When is she saying something really that different? Like, here's the last line that she said in the article. I just want to encourage so many women worldwide to find their passion in any subject possible and understand that nothing is difficult if you really, truly put the work in for it. Some truth in there, but passion in any subject possible, some things are difficult. Like going back to the sketchbook thing, if you want to create a painting or a piece that's 25 inches by 32 inches, if you only have a sketchbook that's 3 by 5, I guess technically you could cut out a couple of papers, stick them together and create a big montage or a big collage piece that way. But there are some certain limitations, and not everything is the same. Some things, I'm never going to be taller than I am today. I mean, there are some advancements in technology. I may be able to get like some stilt legs, but <laughs> I think you get what I mean. Some things, there are limitations. It's not a bad thing that there are limitations, but don't just impose these limitations on yourself. Go out there and actually try to understand what is just difficult and what is impossible. And how you do this is by actually putting in hard work to things and not shirking away from doing hard work because you think something is not possible. Okay. Thanks for listening. That was Conservative Selection. Like, share, and subscribe. Also leave comments below. Let me know if there's other examples of things that you think have a higher chance of selection now that the world has changed or that you can see, okay, in this country, this happens likely because of how the civilization is or culture is. 
whereas it would not be selected for in other countries. This is big when it comes to immigration from certain places. You know what I mean. Okay, till next time. Bye.